Field Sports. It's the Josh Pastner Show, presented by your Mid-South Chevy dealers, the official truck of the Memphis Tigers. The show is supported by Jack Turtles Check-In, the Tennessee Lottery, AutoZone, and MLGW. Welcome in, everyone. Happy holidays. The season's changed. We go from football, we go to basketball, and uh, Josh, the Tigers are off to a very good start. Five and two, they've won three in a row, and the, one of those losses was to the sixth-ranked team in the country, Oklahoma, in a well-fought battle. Congratulations on the beginning. Well, thanks, Dave. You know, we, uh, <clears throat> I, I, really, I really like this team a lot. I really do like this team. I think the more we play, the better we're going to get because with us, the chemistry for the guys to keep getting to know each other on the floor, um, and, and we've played really well through our first seven games. Besides a half here or there, um, I've been very pleased with this team, and I really like the potential of this team. And I've, one of the mottos we've been saying is undersell, overperform. And we want the Tiger Nation to love their product on the floor. And uh, I think to this point, they've, do they, they've, they've done their job. Still got a lot of games left. We're only as good as our last game, so we've got to keep it going. Well, I, I, you're right about a half there or here. How about some free throws yeah. here or there? You might be 7-0. and oh, And it's a little different scheme. You've changed a little bit. You've got one in, four out. Spacing is different. You're getting to the line a lot. You're scoring more. About 10 yeah. points a game more. Well, look, during my time here, I've been more of a three-around two type of coach, high-low basketball. Uh, based on some personnel decisions, we've had to change how we wanted to play. Uh, not only offensively but also defensively and part of that is being four around one meaning more floor spacing uh, allowing more opportunities to drive the ball we want to force two closeouts per possession two legit closeouts that means if we're driving the ball mm -hmm. I call it AASSA -A attack attack skip skip attack and we want to drive the ball downhill look opposite skip it to the opposite and then re-attack again and and what that has allowed us to do is got us to the free throw line and like you said earlier, if we had made our free throws, we'd be sitting here 7-0. and But uh, by us having the floor space on four round one, we've been able to drive the ball downhill, create more driving opportunities. The biggest thing that we haven't done real well just yet is make our three-point shots. And right. we do need to make some threes because teams, because of our ability to drive downhill, we're going to see a lot of zone. And then also defensively, we've changed because of, based on personnel, we've had to shrink the floor more. We're, we're, in the past, we've been able to spread more out because of a shot block or two behind us now do with based on the personnel with that we might not have that same shot blockers in the back we've got to keep the floor shrunk keep it compact and tight and not allow the gaps where guys can drive down the uh, you know be able to drive and we're not in a, in a scramble or a uh, a full rotation mode. We have got a very busy show. Here's what's coming up on the Josh Pastor Show today. You've got the highlights of last night's game and also the game against Louisiana Tech. We've got the Mid-South Chevy dealers inside access. You'll go inside the locker room of the Grambling game and then the Auto Zone Road Ahead plus a very special feature with Jake McDowell. All that's next on the Josh Pastner Show. Mentioned a three-game winning streak for Josh Pastner's basketball team. Had a tough one against UT Arlington at home. The, the the maybe the toughest loss where you didn't make free throws in that game. That turned out to be a pretty good basketball team. But since then, you went to Miami. You knocked off Ohio State. That was a big win. And then you had uh, a nice victory. Against Tech, Louisiana yeah. Tech, which we'll get to in a minute. Last night, here comes a SEMO team with a new coach, Rick Ray, who was at Mississippi State a year ago. Yeah, no, and in fact, Mark Allman, our deputy athletic director, hired Rick Ray uh, when he was the athletic director there at SEMO. But, uh, you know, last night, this was, a, this was a little bit of a dangerous game. Two reasons. One, SEMO came in, um, you know, just kind of been on the road a bunch and hasn't played particularly well, but they had three Memphis kids, and we all know that when the Memphis kids are coming back in the form, you just never know. This team came in as one of the worst free throw shooting teams in the country at 51%. Yep. Last night they shoot 70%. They from the have free throw line. their first 11. It was I unbelievable. And then they are hitting shots off the backboard and everything else. you got to be kidding me. But we did not play well to start the game. And, and Diedrich Lawson, for example, finished with 28 and 14. And I'm just telling you, he didn't play the first seven or eight minutes well at all. It wasn't until 
the game got into it and in the second half did he really get going. But 22 in the second 22 half. 22 in the second half. Absolutely. Turn around jumper. That's impossible and, to stop. And, and, and Trasan Burrell and K.J. Lawson both did not play due to injury. Trasan had a hit pointer. K.J. still recovering from his Achilles situation. Uh, but both guys will be full go uh, uh, next Saturday. And, and we really got going in the second half. Now they cut it down to one, 52-51, and then we turned it up. Uh, Ricky had 10 assists and only one turnover. So Avery, you had two six, double doubles in this game. Yeah, we had two double doubles. Ricky uh, Tarrant, 15 points, 10 assists, and Diedrich Lawson had 28 and 14. Uh, the, the, the thing with Ricky is 10 assists is a great stat. Avery Career Woodson, high. Avery Woodson, six assists, no turnovers. We ended up with 22 assists on 31 made field goals. In our last two games, we've had 44 assists and on 63 made field goals, which, as you know, Dave, I love that stat because that's high assist on made field goals. How about between those two kids, 16 assists, one turn? Yeah. That's, well, that's pretty I, impressive. I, 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 absolutely. And then on top of that, uh, uh, we were able to uh, you know, finish out the game, play well, got the W there towards the end, increased the lead. But I wasn't happy in how we played in, in most parts of the game. I didn't think Mark Kell played it particularly well last mm -hmm. night. Um, uh, you know, Avery didn't get going until the second half. Uh, Shaq, we get we need Shaq, who, who's been his motor has been unbelievable. Still need him to be better. We need Dieter to be from 40 minutes, not 32 minutes. Um, so those are all part of the things. I didn't think Ricky played particularly well. He's got to start making some threes. He's had one game where he's made some threes. We yeah. need him to make some threes because we're going to see a lot of zone through the end of the year. Well, maybe sometimes it's hard to get up for a team that hadn't won a game, and the kids know but that. But that's not an excuse. We got to get the job done. We got to we, we got to do our job. And I was saying this game in a lot of tech here now. The opposite way. They we, we haven't lost. We we played we played a full 40 minutes um, from top to bottom, from start to finish. It was a complete game, and uh, I was really proud of our young men. Uh, on, on, on this game. We really played well. And one of the reasons we really played well, and, and for fans out there, why it's so important for us, we were 10 of 23 from three point range. We, we were shot 45% from three. We need to make the three point shot. That's important for us. Like last night, Versimo, we were three of 16. If you're, if you're five of 16, it's a different ball game. I, just those two more maids. And so mm -hmm. we have got to make threes because to open things up and to continue open the driving lanes to the spread that we want to do the floor spacing we've got to be able to do that here's the mlgw energy play of the game and look at the hustle and i know you weren't happy with how hard ricky tarrant was playing at some point diving for balls there he fed markel and he knows how to finish and that was high energy yeah well i i got on ricky i felt that he wasn't playing as hard as he needed to do he wasn't getting the 50 50 ball battles wasn't winning those uh, the 50-50 balls wasn't winning the loose ball battles, and I felt in the Ohio State game and this game, La Tech game here, he came away with winning 50-50 ball battles. And Markell was playing at a high level in this game from start to finish at a very, very high level. And I told Markell that last night. Our team is so much different and better when he's playing at a high, high level. When his motor is running, when he's the best athlete on the floor, our team is a high-level team. And so Markell's a major X factor for us. Trasan Burrell had two threes in this game versus La Tech. There was a good pass there to Shaq with the finish. He was really good, Shaq, obviously, in that game. He's had a good week this week. There's the second three there from Trasan. And uh, you can see the bench. There's Ricky waving the towel there. High low there from Ricky into, into Shaq and the and one with the left hand as well, too. And that was some good improvement there for Shaq. So a good convincing win from start to finish. Yeah, you have blood by 25 at one point. This was a team that was 5-0 and oh coming in here, and you put them away early. Well, we put them away early, and I felt what we, the reason we put them away early is because we started the game. It was 4-2 for like the first four and a half, five minutes. But the reason we were able to pull, put them away, we didn't give them any second chances. That's been big for us, is about boxing out and, and it being a clinic on boxing out. And that's something that we did not do last night against Simo. Nope, uh, but uh, no, that was convincing for sure. And the Tigers are uh, off to this 5-2 and two start. When we come back, Jake McDowell, front and center. You're watching The Josh Pastner Show. Welcome back in. Jake McDowell joins us now, and he and his dad are the only tandem who have ever started father-son combo at the University of Memphis. I know that makes your dad very proud. That's got to feel pretty good, Jake, huh? Yeah, it does. It's, actually, I did not know that before, uh, but it's very, I think it's very special, especially for 
Growing up being a Memphis fan, starting in the, the pyramid back in the old days, it's a very special feeling. Yeah, well, and let me say this on Jake. You know, one thing about Jake is Jake does everything the right way. And he might not be blessed with some of the other God-given abilities that some of the other guys have, but what he makes up for it with just how hard he plays, gives, gives his body up for the team. I mean, he came in in that Ohio State game and helped us win the game. I mean, last year versus South Florida, he started at South Florida and did a great job. And uh, the guy's a winner. We're very fortunate that he's here with us. And he's going to graduate in three years and then start working on his master's next year. Yeah, that's you a know? great thing. Yeah. Not, not only does he play hard, he plays very, very smart. There's no question about that. And you had opportunities. You could have gone to other schools. I know of two or three that were really interested in you as a scholarship guy, as a guy who'd come in and play a bunch. You chose to be a walk-on here because of your love for the school. What, what was you know, part of that decision-making process? I think just leaving you know, a legacy since my dad did play here and... Uh, you know, kind of be tied to him, and I've always wanted to be, you know, a Memphis basketball player ever since, you know, really young, you, you know that, Yeah. growing around it, so uh, I think that was, there really wasn't any other choice once I got the opportunity to walk on. Well, Josh, what went into your thinking about that? Well, obviously, uh, when, when we talked, uh, I, I originally told him, hey, there's probably not going to be any chance for you ever to play, and, <laughs> and this or that, and, and I was honest That's with changed. him. <laughs> but, you know, through his hard work, and, w and when we sat in the staff meetings, we sat there and, and we've talked about it, the one thing that Jake does is he just does everything right, and, and, it's, and, and it's especially the way teams are now with ball screen action. Like, for example, Nick Marshall. Nick Marshall's going to be a very good player. I mean, the guy's seven feet, and he's going to be really good. He just is not able to guard the ball screens as good as Jake is yet. And that's just based on Jake's IQ of the game, understanding the game he's been around. So when Nick can learn of the ability that Jake has on guarding the ball screen action, it's going to make Nick that much better of a player. So he's, he's making guys better. Right, Absolutely. Before we run out of time, tell me, what is your favorite thing about being a Memphis Tiger? I think just the love that the fans have for us. You know, they, they're always there. Even, even when we do play bad, they, they stick around and uh, they stand by us all the time. And, and a great thing. decision on your part to go after this guy because he helps your guys get better. Well, he, he helps our guys, and, and he's, uh, uh, he's a great ambassador for the program, a tremendous ambassador for the program, does things the right way, not only on the court, as I've mentioned, but also off the court. Um, you know, like I said, going to graduate in three years. Uh, he's in the dean's list. Um, he's, he's, a, he's brilliant. And so he's one of those guys where anyone watching you're, and you're in, a, you're in the business world, you're going to want Jake on your team, you know. And I don't know if Jake wants to go into coaching one day or not, but as in, in business, uh, I think people that uh, are, are looking for guys to move up the chain, he's one of those guys that can, that can run any corporation, you know, any time that he wants to do what it. What would you like to do? Right now, I uh, actually interned at a uh, mutual fund this past summer, and huh. that's, that's what I'm interested in right now. Finance. Yes. That's... Invest your, money, invest, money. Yes. <laughs> invest, your, invest your money with Jake. Look at this, Hank and Carol. He's on TV. Yeah. Jake. I love it. I really do. We've got a feature coming up thanks to Josh. We've got some inside access. You'll see the locker room right before the Grambling game. That's next on the Josh Pastner Show. You're watching the Josh Pastner Show. after a basketball game, there's a lot of tumult and organized chaos that goes on behind the scenes from prep work and looking at film and things of that nature. And most of the time, fans don't get a, a real glimpse of this. But thanks to Josh, Kevin Barbie takes us with inside access. Doc, you want to say a few words first? Yeah. Come on, let Doc yeah. say a few yeah. words here real quick. Definitely honored to be here in person with you. Here's what I want you to think about. Today, Right now, when you go out there, there is a little kid. You don't know if it's a boy, you don't know if it's a girl. It's the first time this little kid is ever going to see a game like this. And they are going to be staring at you, and they are going to be watching with wide eyes. You want them to see the confident, incredible young man that you are. That's what you want to see. I promise you they're out there, so play for them. All right? All right, guys, let's watch a little film right here just so we're, we're, uh, we're aware of what's going on. Gray, he led them last year in, point, in points and rebounds. He's a senior. He's undersized. Don't go for the shot face. That is perfect textbook basketball. Okay, look at our defense here. This is how we need to play today. Perfect D. 
Listen up, real quick. Listen, let's finish the possession today. We know these things. Let's get the job done. <laughs> I'm going to take a check, second half. That's a great job. Okay, you did a great job in the second half. We were better when we had better energy, but guys, that's what I tried to tell you guys beforehand and yesterday. We've got to be a team for whoever we're playing. We just, we're not good enough just to show up and just think we're just going to show up and win. We're not good enough. We're, we're not. And the teams we play are good, are good teams. We've got to continue to improve. It's not, we gotta continue to improve, we gotta continue to get better, okay? And we just, we wanna continue to play the right way, we gotta get better. Family on three, family on three, one, two, three, family! I loved a lot of the stuff that you see in there, Josh. For instance, you had the psychologist in there. You passed out cookies after the win. At halftime, folks, they actually go over video from that game. They get it ready that quickly. Yeah, no, well, we had the, uh, the doctor there, uh, Dr. Christian Conte, who's one of the leading experts in the world in anger management. And uh, I brought him in after we played Georgia Tech in our private scrimmage. We had five technical fouls. They said, I'm not dealing with that. I'm bringing someone here to help this team with that. Uh, and then the cookies were for my wife. For um, uh, uh, she gave to all the guys, so um, I, <clears throat> I didn't tell her this, but I she, I forgot to give them like two weeks prior, so oh, I don't correct. I don't know if they were stale or not. You but, always uh, get yourself in trouble. Yeah, I know. You're but need but, I, got, but I, gave, I gave them to him afterwards. So, uh, but no, we it, it was good, and um, uh, and you're right. In halftime of games, we show film of what we did in the first half, good and or bad. And so they can see that. So uh, the key thing is guys following and executing the game plan. But our, our whole thing is about playing with great energy. I believe in winning the 50-50 ball battle and smashing teams on the glass. That's really important to us. Well, the last three games, that worked. Now there's a week off, but there is the AutoZone road ahead. That's next on the Josh Pasner Show. The AutoZone road ahead a week from last night. It's the Tigers and the Jaspers of Manhattan who have been very good the last couple of years. Coach, you've got a whole week off to prepare. What do you do at that time? Well, we have, it's a 7 o'clock tip. It is a 7 o'clock tip on, on, on Saturday night. And uh, this Manhattan team's a good team. They're, they've been to the NC2A tournament the last two years. Steve Massiello, who is a longtime Rick. assistant with uh, Rick Pitino, they play the same, same similar way. They're going to press back into a matchup zone. So we're going to need to make some shots. One, we're going to need to take care of the basketball. Two, we're going to need to make some shots. This is a good team. They've got some good athletes. And like I said, they've been to back-to-back -back NCAA tournaments. And hopefully you're going to be healthy. We should see K.J. Lawson uh, the, and Tresan Burrell again, K.J. Right? Lawson and uh, Tresan Burrell should be full go and ready to go on Saturday. Can't wait. Use the most of the rest to get everybody healthy. I need a little rest myself. So I'll, you know. bet, I'll bet you will. <laughs> and we'll see you next Saturday again at 7 o'clock at FedEx Forum. To all our Jewish friends, happy Hanukkah. We'll see you in a week.